Hey guys, it's Ninja Shotaku here, and today I'm going to be looking at a personal favourite of mine, and that is none other than Spice and Wolf. Now, Spice and Wolf have an anime, a light novel, and a manga created after it. So today I'm going to be reviewing the anime for Spice and Wolf. Now, just a quick heads up, there will more than likely be spoilers for Spice and Wolf for the anime within this video. Now, Spice and Wolf follows two main characters, Holo and Craft Lawrence. At the beginning, we get introduced to Craft Lawrence, who is a goods peddler. So he goes around buying and selling goods. And with him being a goods peddler, I like how they were able to set it in a medieval themed world. So it's not a futurized world, He's a goods peddler like it would be back in medieval times. One thing that Spice and Wolf does really, really well is the scenery. Because Lawrence is always travelling because he's a goods peddler, he's always going to new places, new towns, new cities, looking for the best trade. So it's really good when they're able to get the scenery right. And it's always different, it's never the same, which intrigues you even more because because you feel like you're going on a journey with Lawrence and Holo. You're going to each town. And this is even more emphasised by the fact that each town has their own personality. Each town has their own unique aspect about it. Whether it's a fishing town or a wheat town or a gambling town. Each town is unique and they have their own spirit and life. And also they try and make you feel like you're part of the town. For example if they're having a festival or a party then you immediately feel like you are part of that festival with Lawrence and Holo. It is really cool how they're able to do that. So because of the scenery is really good, you don't get bored as easily. You're able to be m more excited about the place you're going to because the journey doesn't tire you out when you're watching. It's almost as if each bit is a new breath of fresh air. So that's mainly why I really like the scenery. Now, possibly the main attraction of the whole thing is Holo herself. She's a wolf, yes, and she's able to go into human form, yes. But that's not just it. She's more than that. She has a unique personality about her. She's always able to make you feel a certain way, depending on how she is acting. For example, if she's upset, you kind of feel down and a bit upset because you feel that emotion. They go on a roller coaster ride with you as you get to know the characters more. You feel attached to the characters as it's basically their life that they are living. And it goes really in depth into their life because it shows what they do and how they like eat, sleep, drink, everything. It's where they go to, it's what they do together. So you feel a connection with Holo, and because Holo has a weird, quirky and bubbly personality, she's always up to something, she's always happy, she's always sad, she's always... You never have the same emotion really with Holo. It's every new day is something new with Holo. She's very intelligent, and everything she does, she does for a reason. And there are points when I was kind of getting confused as to what her emotions actually were because it kept changing so much it's hard to keep up whether does she like Lawrence or does she hate him it's that sort of aspect and that leads perfectly into the love between them which is another thing I really really like they both are going on a journey to they're both going on a journey, but Lawrence picked up Holo after finding her in his cart, and gradually she just became part of him, and they just sort of journeyed together. And it seems that as time progressed, they got used to each other, and this end goal didn't seem like something they wanted to do, because they wanted to be together, which emphasises the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of romance, they would be very good together, because at first it's like they are just travelling partners, but then later on, you start to see certain scenes where it shows them dancing together, or it shows them hugging, and it's like... They're caring for each other, which really, which is something I really, really like about Spice and Wolf. So if you like romance anime, then this would definitely be good for you, because there's definitely a lot of romance. But also there's adventure as well, because they're going on a journey, which is something I really like, because they're going to these different places, so it's... So the only thing that I'd probably say is a bit 
bad in a way about the Spider Wolf anime is and that is the length of it. I think the seasons could have been expanded upon so we learned more about the towns, the places they went to, the a bit more about the paths which they took to get there, like they could have took little stop offs more often. And also the characters themselves, they could have gone more into the backstory, they could have expanded on a lot of different things. But other than that, I think it was good. They could have added another season, which would be great, and I want them to add another season right now. But we're going to have to do with what we have. So if you want more, then you do have the light novels and the manga, which do expand upon the anime. Because there's more content within them. So... I definitely recommend this to anyone who's a first time getting into anime, someone who's wanting to rewatch anime, or someone who just wants a good recommendation for something that is really, really good. Whether that's romance or adventure or anything like that, because I think this would suit pretty much anybody. It's not too long, so if you don't have too much time, then this anime would be great for you. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't hit the one right next to it. Tell me in the comments down below what you think about Spice and Wolf or what was your favourite part about Spice and Wolf. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.